What's going on guys? In this video I'm going to talk about a really clever idea that I discovered uh, through a blog post that a friend linked me to. It's called Where Is Your Tech Passion by Dan Langeal. And in this post he recommends as sort of a learning detour slash finding where your interests and passions are, he recommends finding an old computer, fixing it up so that it works again, that is adding new hard drives, you know, a, an optical drive, that kind of stuff, new RAM, learning about the sort of A plus, you know, hardware side of things that way, installing an operating system on that computer. My recommendation is to make that operating system as minimal as possible, um, just so that you sort of have maximum learning. Don't just install a full featured, you know, GUI Linux operating system on there. And then install some smaller tools that you want in your environment, and then install a web server and then write a small web application that you then host on that web server. So you can start with a static site and then do a Ruby or a Python or a Perl or PHP site. Learn the basics of a programming language. I recommend Python, of course, but you can use whatever you like. Write a web application in that language. Think about how to deploy that web application. I would personally add some monitoring see how setting that up is, see what kind of experience you have there. If that's interesting to you, maybe do some alerting. Then take that program that you've written and go through the process of putting it in version control if it's not already, something like Git. Go ahead and make that public using something like GitHub or Bitbucket, whatever you want. And then that pretty much takes you through the entire process. You've seen a little bit of everything. If you're a junior sysadmin or an aspiring junior system administrator, this is not like a hard task, but you will learn quite a bit probably going through it and touching some of these new subjects that you haven't seen before. And it will also answer that question, which I get a lot from people in comments and emails and messages on YouTube, which is, how do I figure out what my interests are and how do I, you know, should I go into security? Should I go into you know, performance engineering? Should I go into programming? I heard databases are cool. Do I want to be a database admin? There's a million niches that you can get into and no one can tell you which of them are going to be the most interesting to you. You just have to play around a little bit with them. Now you're actually in an enviable position because as a junior sysadmin, you're going to touch so many different technologies and so many different kind of parts of the IT business because sysadmins are kind of what holds it all together on the ops side. So you actually have a very natural introduction into the basics of a lot of different disciplines. Like your scripting is its own niche thing and on the other side of the spectrum it becomes full-blown software development and computer science if you're interested in that. Your basic, you know, dumping and restoring databases is, there are full-featured, you know, DBA roles, uh, database administrator roles, where you do nothing except for working with a specialized uh, database, usually in RDBMS, but um, could also be something like MongoDB or, you know, these special NoSQL databases. That's an entire career you can have essentially um, in that niche. So you're lucky because you get to touch a wide variety of subjects. So pay attention while you're working with all these little things and go a little bit beyond what you need for each task just to get your daily work done. Actually pay attention and learn a little bit more than you need to, learn some of the fundamental theory underlying this stuff, and ask yourself, huh, is this interesting to me? Is this cool? Um, I'm going to start telling this story a lot, I guess. I've mentioned it a couple times in the last few weeks, but I have a friend who is on the Windows admin side of things, kind of trying to get over to Linux, and one of the things that he did within, I think, something like three or four weeks, he he wanted to do something with uh, file sharing, backups, and... Um, that kind of thing. So he set up a FreeBSD machine with ZFS running on it, which is an incredible file system. And he was so interested in it that he learned all the ins and outs that he could of ZFS. And he experimented with different things and he, you know, did ZFS send and receive to like sync an entire file system as a stream over to another file system over SSH. And like all these really cool things that you can do with ZFS and learned about how it works underneath and, you know, how a copy on write file system works and like at the code level, you know, what happens when a snapshot is taken. Um, and within like a month, even though he 
has not been doing system administration as long as I have. He was teaching me things about ZFS that I didn't know that are truly fascinating. So don't underestimate how much you can learn about one of these niche topics in a short amount of time, as long as you're practically applying it. And as long as you sort of open to the idea of getting into something that might be a little bit of a detour for your sort of common daily tasks. You know, he didn't need all these ZFS features for the basic things he wanted to get done, but he was sort of open enough to learning some more about something that seemed cool to actually get pretty good at it. So there you go. Uh, that is my recommendation. Take one of these learning detours. Um, if it helps you to have some structure, I really can't recommend sort of one of these bottom-up approaches enough. Something like Dan's post where you start, you know, with some old spare dead hardware essentially, and you swap in new parts until it's working, until it's posting, and then you put on an operating system. One of these bottom-up things, it's a great approach. I also recommend it for things like programming. I mean, programs like the NAND to Tetris uh, for sort of computer science and, and software development is a really interesting idea. It's not really sysadmin related but it's the same approach. You basically start with logic gates, which are the basics of computing hardware, and then you create more and more complex uh, computing primitives. You put those together into an ALU, you build a CPU uh, in this hardware description language, then you build a very tiny operating system to manage those resources. I haven't done the whole thing. Um, it's incredible, and it will probably take me another two years to finish. But, um, you know, these learning detours, learning something bottom-up is incredibly useful. You will know things that other people that you come in contact with during your work simply have no idea about. And it can help you do things like troubleshoot much faster. Or, you know, just build that experience of, like, I feel like this problem is probably going to be over here. And then you look and it is there because you're just, your brain is processing a lot more about what's going on and you just know a lot more of the theory underneath on like a visceral practical level. Okay, rant over. Um, learn things from the bottom up. Learn things on a practical level. Um, oh, and final pitch. Another thing like that is uh, Linux from scratch. I think it's lfs.org. Uh, I'll put the link at the bottom, but um, uh, Linux from scratch is basically building your own Linux distribution, basically compiling your own um, and seeing what the minimum amount you need for a running you know, Linux operating system that you built yourself is. And then there's other add-on projects where you can you know, create a security-focused Linux OS or you can create a uh, you know, slightly expanded one that's like more usable or a little bit more abstract or easier to build. Um, Linux from scratch. Another one of these like bottom up things. So there you go. If you've got the time and energy for these kinds of things, these types of longer term bottom up learning projects are probably the, the best bang for your buck in terms of time, energy, and the actual knowledge and practical skills you can get out of it. Okay. Uh, have fun. Uh, if you actually do end up trying this, uh, send me a message or post in the comments what your experience is like. Feel free to like link to your blog or whatever if you've got a write-up on it. Um, I really can't recommend this kind of thing enough. Cool. See you guys in the next one. Yay! Yay! Yay.